time is it? A little group today, huh? I have a pit plus to be the only girl. All right, all right, here we go, guys. We're learning about justice. Um, and so, ah, just kidding. <laughs> all right, so and I've been trying to emphasize grace and justice. So grace is when we get what we don't deserve. Justice is giving what we what, giving people what they do deserve. And so I've tried to emphasize, guys, I think the way one pastor says it is best, is that when we receive God's grace in our lives, that makes us just. That makes us seek to be just to other people. Okay? And so that's why I've been emphasizing the last few weeks about one of the main ways that we can show people justice, and that's with our muscles. Show me your muscles. Yeah. I'm not sure. You don't have muscles. So, and I'm trying to emphasize that the tongue is a little muscle, but it, it can do a lot of damage or a lot of good. Okay? And, uh, and so, specifically, uh, we, we've been looking at how we should honor. This is what 1 Peter 2.17 says. The last couple of weeks we looked at this. Honor who? Everyone. Why? I've been trying to emphasize because we're created in the image of God. And so, honor means to value. It means to respect. It means to esteem. And Peter says we should do that to who? Everyone. Even people we disagree with. People who are different than us. And so the point is, is that number one is the one I want to emphasize. We have to recognize every human being we meet is created in the image of God. Every human being is an image bearer of our God. And so they deserve respect for that. Okay? And so we need to recognize that. And so that's what I've tried to emphasize. C.S. Lewis says it this way. I think it's good. Is you never... Talk, there are no ordinary people. You never talk to a mere mortal. See, everyone you talk to, guys, every human being is an eternal being. will live forever. And so we need to grant them honor as being created in God's image. Now, the thing I want us to emphasize today is not only are we to honor everyone, okay, but at, when it comes to justice, what do we owe them? Well, we owe them respect. We owe them honor. But we also owe them the truth. Okay? Truth is a debt we owe to all people. That's what I want us to see. Ephesians 4.25 says this, Therefore, having put away falsehood, okay, that's speaking lies, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. See, we owe one another the truth. Okay? Uh, here's some, a couple more passages we see. Uh, there we go. Oh, I went too far. There we go. Lying lips. Okay? What are lying lips? Those are lips. And that lie. Right? <laughs> lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. That's not good. Okay? But those who act faithfully, or what in the context what he's saying is those who speak truthfully are his delight. Okay? Or the next one is truthful lips. What are those? Those are lips that Tell the truth. Truthful lips endure forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. Okay? And then, how important, guys, is it that we tell the truth? Is it pretty important? I mean, I think you guys all know it's important, but, but again, when we look to God's Word and His standard, consider this in Revelation. Okay? It says this in Revelation 22, the last chapter of the Bible. Up here, guys. It says, outside of the New Jerusalem, what we usually consider this heaven, it's talking about what it's going to be like. It says, outside of that city are the dogs. Okay? That's uh, a euphemism for a nasty sin. And sorcerers. That's like witches, wizards. Not like Harry Potter, but like wicked. Okay? And the sexually immoral. And murderers. Is that pretty serious? Murderers? And idolaters. Worshiping false gods. Is that pretty serious? So he says, outside of the New Jerusalem, there's all these... I mean, what, what we would all consider big sins, wouldn't we? And then what's the next one he says? And everyone who loves and practices falsehood. See, for most of us, that seems a bit out of place. Guys, the point is, is it is important we speak the truth. Now, what I want you guys to understand then is when we speak the truth to people, we need to understand how we're to do it, and we're to do it in a way that honors them as in the prayers of God. So let me give you a couple examples here. I want to give the example. I'm going to use Hal. I was going to use Robert, but I didn't see him. Actually, Alan. I'll do Alan. You can stay there. We want to honor the agent. Okay? Um, and so, if you don't mind me asking, Alan, how, how old are you? Can I ask that? 78. 
78. So let's say, let's say in 25 years, okay, we come down here and Mr. Allen comes in and 25 years then he's 103, okay? And so he comes in, but let's say Mr. Allen, this is just make-believe, okay? I'm not saying you do this or anything like that. But let's say he is absolutely convinced he was president in 1980 to 1988. That he ran with Bush. It was the Garber-Bush era. And he, said, he comes in and you say, hey, Mr. Allen, and he yells at you. Hey, I'm not Mr. Allen. It's President Garber to you. Huh? <laughs> Could you imagine that? And, but then you said, no, no, no. Mr. Allen, Mr. Allen, look it. It was Reagan and Bush. It wasn't Garber and Bush. And he said, that's Photoshopped. He doesn't believe it. <laughs> and every time you try to call him Mr. Allen, he causes a huge scene. It's a big deal. And so eventually, you probably would be tempted just to call him President Garber, wouldn't you? Okay? And, and here's the point, okay? Now, if... if if Mr. Allen was living that way, he's not living in reality, is he? Okay. But is it really affecting anybody else? No, and so you Christians would differ as to how you deal with, with that issue. Okay? And, and I'm not going to get into how we should, but the point is, you might just call him President Garber. You might just you know, try to you know, make it a peaceful thing in church and all that kind of stuff. And, okay, now, some might not, but the point is this, is if he's living outside of reality, it's not affecting other people. Now, let me give you another example. If let's say I raise my kids, and I raise them up to be the Atlantic Puffins that they are, okay? And so I, from when they're very young kids, I explain to them that they're not human beings, that they are Atlantic Puffins, okay? And they might not look like it, but that's who they are, that Jackie and myself, we're Puffins, okay? But we came to Robbinsville because it's a good place to, to raise Pufflings. That's actually what you call them, Pufflings, okay? Such a cute puffling. Yeah. All right, so I got me some pufflings, okay? And so when they're real young, let, I mean, let's say I actually fed them worms and bread when they're little, just to help them understand. And as they get older, okay, as they get older, I feed them fish, because that's what puffins eat, okay? And so the big thing, though, happens, is, and I teach them as we, as we have chickens, I teach them to treat their chickens like their cousins, you know, <laughs> Because they are, okay? And so I raise them to be puffins. And they, let's say they really believe they're puffins, okay? And so the big thing is, is kind of the age of, uh, 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 coming of age ceremony is when they turn 18. So March 3 for Timmy. As we go out to, let's see here. That's a lighthouse and I think it's Oak Island off the coast. You know, puffins live on the ocean. Atlantic puffins, what, what, what ocean do they live on? So that's somewhere off the coast. I don't know. I don't know where it is, but my understanding is in the coast of Brooklyn uh, somewhere. Okay, it's 153 feet up, and so coming of age is where you know birds they have to fly, right? And so Timmy is 18. He goes up there, and uh, he's going to now spread his wings and fly, okay? And if he doesn't, he gets a little help, okay? Now, okay? Now, just kidding, because if I pushed him out, that would be murder, that would be wrong. So I don't really push him out. But the point is, is he does it. Now, Timmy believes he's a puffer, and he jumps from 153 feet up in the lighthouse. What's going to happen? He's not going to make it, is he? Okay? And so that, that's going to be sad. And then the same thing will happen to Gracie. The same thing will happen to Paul. Same thing will happen to Josh. Okay? You get the picture, okay? Now, here's the point. Is even if, like, what if they really believe they're puffing? Like, it really hurts their feelings that you call Aiden a person. He says, I'm not a person. I'm a puffin. Okay? Well, no, no, Aiden, you're, you're not a puffin. You're a person. No, that really isn't. Okay? What I want you guys to understand, okay? What I want you to understand is as crazy as that sounds, you guys would not let me do that, would you? Why not? Be well, ultimately, because it would lead to their destruction, wouldn't it? You'd say, you've got to live in reality. Look at them. They're clearly not puffins. Go back. There we go. That's a puffin. That's Timmy. Dave. Okay? Clearly you're not puffins. Now, the point I want you guys to understand is this. Okay? Is we would need to speak the truth in love. Now, you live in a day and age, and I'm sorry about this, but you live in a day and age of pronoun hospitality. I'm not going to explain that to you. Okay? What it means is this. When I was your age, I didn't even know what a pronoun was. 
Okay? And if I did know what a pronoun was, I had to learn two. He and she. That's it. There's 78 pronouns you guys have to decide and learn. Have to decide. Learn. Okay? And that, so the point is a name tag in our day and age, guys, as crazy as it sounds about me raising up puffins, the day and age we live in, this is what name tags look like. They say hello, you put your name, and then you put please use, and that, those are all different pronouns. And that's not all of them, that's just some. So they, so you'd say, this is Callista, uh, they is a cute girl. I mean, that's actually what is expected, guys. Like, I'm not making that up. Okay, it sounds crazy, okay? Uh, there's he, him, his, she, her, hers, Z, her, hers, uh, Z, them, zers. The, and it goes on and on and on and on and on. Now, here's the point I want you guys to see. This is real. This is why I often say that boys can't become girls and girls can't become boys. That's considered hate speech in our day and age. It really is. Because of this kind of thinking, okay, where people really think that. Now, the point is this, guys. If, if people are raised in this, it contradicts God's word, doesn't it? See, look what God's word says. And you guys all know it. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. See, God created human beings, guys, in a binary system. There's no such thing as non-binary. Doesn't exist. Okay? But what if somebody really believes that that's what they are? And there are lots of people like that. What if a boy really believes he's a girl? He's still a he. What if a girl really thinks she's a he? It gets confusing, okay? It's still a she. See, that's what it is. Now, here's my point that I want us to understand. Not only is this obvious according to God's word, but guys, it's obvious according to general revelation. This is not a real human bone. Don't worry, okay? Huh? No, I'm not. But guys, this is about the actual size. I think it's a femur right there, okay? But guys, if you dug this up from a person who lived 100 years ago, guess what you'd find in that bone? Worms. Worms? I mean, maybe. Okay. <laughs> DNA. You know what that DNA would tell you? If it's a boy or a girl. From a bone. Point is, you can change your body, guys, but who you are as male and female goes deeper than what you think about yourself. And guys, everybody knows this. Everybody knows this. And yet, what's happening is people aren't living in reality and they're expecting everybody else to encourage other people to live in this lie. Okay? And what I want you guys to understand is two things. Okay? What I want you to understand is living in that lie leads to a lot of hurt, confusion, anger, depression, and even worse. And guys, so, so perpetuating that lie would be just as bad as raising your kids to be puffed. They're going to die when they're 18. Now, it might not be a coming-of-age experience. But, guys, it's going to lead to their destruction, and it's not going to be pretty. And so that's why, guys, it's not loving. It's not loving to live a lie, is it? Now, at the same time, we also need to recognize this, is that people, a boy who thinks he's a girl, or a girl who thinks she's a they, okay, or whatever, that person is created in whose image? In God's image. And that person is an image bearer of God. And that's why we recognize, guys, when people are created in God's image, guess what? We are designed by God to a certain way. And if we live in accordance to how we're designed, that leads to flourishing. If we reject that and go our own way, that leads to confusion, to hurt, to depression, to suicide, to difficulty. And that's why, guys, out of love, we don't want people to live contrary to the design of God. We want people to recognize it. But we need to recognize that all people deserve the respect and honor of us. So we need to... Yeah, one more thing. Okay? We need to recognize, guys, it's truthful lips. Speak the truth in love. That doesn't mean you have to be, you know, antagonistic. But, guys, we need to love each other enough to speak the truth. And guys, you live in the day and age where speaking the truth is going to hurt. And I don't mean it's going to hurt others, although people will say it. It does, and it probably does. But I'm saying is, guys, speaking the truth is going to cost you guys a ton. Okay, so let's pray and ask God to give us grace that we would recognize the importance of truth spoken in love toward the people around us and toward each other. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you again for your word in these uh, confusing and dark times. We thank you that we have solid rock that we can stand on. We pray and ask for wisdom 
that we would be both bold and gentle as we seek to uh, be lights in this world. We thank you for the opportunities this will give us, but we recognize we need your grace and your strength uh, and your spirit to be the testimonies and, and, and lights in this world. So help us to that end. For your honor and glory we ask. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, guys.